Hi everyone, Patrick Gargano here from Learning and Certifications. Hank Preston, also from Learning and Certifications, here for another look at the CCNA exam topic, domains that make up this wonderful exam. And boy, do we have a wonderful domain for you today. <laughs> you were gonna say that. <laughs> it's domain six. I mean, Hank is our automation and programmability guru, and that's what this topic is all about. 10% um, of the exam will be based around this domain. So again, although it's less than some of the others, it's still a very important one and getting, I think, even more important as, as technologies evolve. Yeah. We, we talk a lot about automation and programmability and its relevance in the networking space. Um, and as we can see, we've got domain six, an entire domain in the CCNA blueprint dedicated to automation and programmability. But that doesn't mean that you need to be a programmer to be a CCNA. Um, we've talked about the verbs that are out there. And if we take a look at the verbs that make up the tasks in domain six, you're going to see explain, compare, describe, right? The focus here is not knowing how to do a lot of these automation and programmability topics. It's really about exposure, understanding what's possible, um, how these topics relate back to what you're going to do as a network engineer. So don't feel like um, when we talk about IP connectivity, right? You have to configure IP addressing. You have to configure OSPF. In domain six, we're not going to be doing any actual coding. You're not going to be writing Python. You're not going to be building playbooks in, in these pieces. Those are wonderful skills to have, yeah. but that's not what we're talking about here in domain six. Um, what is something that you think is really important every network engineer know as they journey into domain six here with CCNA? I just want to follow up with, before I answer, Hank, sure. uh, because I am not a Python expert and I am not an automation expert. So hearing what Hank's just said about not necessarily having to sit there and write up a bunch of code during the CCNA exam makes me feel better about my chances. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, listen, there's a couple of things that jump out, especially with this 1.1 version of the exam. There's a few changes that we made from 1.0 to 1.1 and most of them are, are in this particular domain. So the one of them that jumps out in particular is this 6.6, uh, .6, where we talk about Ansible and Terraform. So we used to talk about another one, was, I think it was Puppet. Puppet, yeah. Um, so Puppet's not as popular in the industry anymore. And so we really um, doubled down, if I, can, if I can put it that way, on these two particular technologies, Ansible and, and Terraform. So I'm going to put Hank on the spot. Can you give us a 10 seconds on each one, different sure. between Ansible and Terraform? Yeah, because I think that's the key aspect here in 6.6 .6, is knowing the difference and how to identify them. And so both of these tools, Ansible and Terraform, excellent network automation tools, quite popular in the industry, but they do tackle slightly different aspects. Um, a key difference between Ansible and Terraform is something they refer to as state, right? When you set up, uh, when you run an Ansible playbook, the Ansible playbook kind of just connects to the network and moves forward, maybe gathers a little bit of information about what the network's configured and then makes changes. Terraform, on the other hand, Terraform is designed to always know what the network is supposed to look like, what the state of the network right. is supposed to be. Okay. And so with Terraform, its goal is to look at what its view of the network is supposed to be and then identify how to make the changes right. to, to what the current state is. Right? So that state concept, Ansible is considered state -less. Right. Ansible doesn't remember what the network looked like. Terraform is state full. Okay. Right? It knows what the network is supposed to look like and it considers that as it runs yeah. those details. So that difference in state is something that you should be comfortable with as part of 6.6 .6 that's here. I'm so glad I'm doing this today with Hank. I've, I've learned a few things already about Ansible and Terraform. Um, the other one, Hank, I think that really jumps out I again in this 1.1 version of the exam is the 6.4, the, the AI topic. Artificial it's a big topic, intelligence. but yes, it is. And that's one of the things that I think that's really critical. Uh, Patrick, you mentioned we're on 1.1. A lot of the changes in 1.1 were here in domain six. Now, we say a lot of the changes. The changes were not that big. Exactly. It was, what, 5% of the blueprint yeah, that yeah. was in there? But when the important part, why we look at changes on um, our certification blueprints is to maintain their relevance. And artificial intelligence is uh, undoubtedly becoming more and more relevant yes. across the world, not just in IT, everywhere, but definitely something as network engineers we need to be comfortable with. So in 6.4, right, again, it's not configure, you're not building artificial intelligence systems, but you should know the verbs, you should know the, the terminology. What's the difference between generative and predictive artificial intelligence? Yeah. How do these relate back to the network? Right, that's again, exposing our network engineers and our future network experts, right, to these topics at the early stages here in the CCNA is what the blueprint is all about. And I think what's what I like about 6.4 in particular is it's not asking you, hey, how do I use chat GPT to write an essay? No, no, no. Look at that that entire item. It finishes with in-network operations. We, how is it used actually in some of our Cisco technologies, yeah. right? Like Catalyst Center and others. Um, 
to help your work, uh, it, it just make your job easier at the end of the day. Yeah. And that's the key area that's here, right? How does AI fit into your job as a network engineer? And network operations is great. We get so much data, so many things from logging information and, and monitoring and telemetry that comes out. Yeah. It can be really hard to diagnose that. Yeah. Overwhelming yeah. is a great word yeah. for it. Artificial intelligence is something that we can use in network operations. And that's something that you'll learn about as you study for uh, your CCNA certification here in 6.4. Now, what's something else? What's something that's been in Domain 6 for a long time that is really critical for people to understand? Well, I, I, my role at, at Learning Certifications is focused primarily on uh, SD-WAN. And so although it doesn't actually say SD-WAN in Domain 6, it kind of does in 6.2 and 6.3. We talk about controller-based networking. There's a couple of different flavors of that. SD access would be one, but mm -hmm. definitely SD-WAN is one. So we talk a little bit about making sure you understand what these different solutions are and how they operate, how the control plane, the data plane, and the management plane are separated out to, well, make your job easier at the end of the day. And so the 6.2 and 6.3, to me, they kind of go together. We talk about underlays and overlays and, yeah. and all of that fabric infrastructure that's deployed, either in the LAN with SD access or a WAN with sd WAN. Yeah. And so as you're studying for your CCNA certification and to earn that, you can have confidence that we at Cisco are maintaining the relevance of the certification with what's critical today. Now, I earned my CCNA certification many, many years ago. <laughs> Me and, too. Yeah, <laughs> and we didn't have automation and programmability in the domain then, right? But now we do because the CCNA certification is a foundation for yesterday's network engineers, it was for me, it was for Patrick, and it will be a foundation for tomorrow's network engineers as well. And you can count on the fact that we're gonna make sure that these blueprints, the things that we're gonna teach you, will keep you relevant yeah. into the future for your career. And I think, hopefully you've realized why we're standing here talking about this domain. It's all about DevNet to a certain extent, right? The, the, um, the, the DevNet uh, and certifications that we have around um, around automation and pro programmability kind of tie into what we do here with the CCNA. Absolutely. And as you do your CCNA and you earn that certification, again, we've mentioned it a few times, it's the first step into your journey as a network engineer. Mm. And if you get really excited about mm. automation and programmability in your CCNA studies, you can take a look at the DevNet Associate, yep. which really focuses in on automation and programmability and the career path for that type of a network engineer. All right, any final thoughts here about automation and programmability? So I think that wraps it up, right? Yeah. We've, we've gone through all the six domains. Um, hopefully you've had a look at them all and, and they've helped you kind of get ready, get your mind wrapped around where you need to focus on in your studies. Again, a couple of plugs here about the CCNA prep program. If you're working towards getting ready for your exam and you're struggling with some of the topics, mm -hmm. sign up for CCNA prep. You'll get access to not just a great community, but some videos that we've recorded on routing and security and IP services. Uh, that'll help you get ready for that exam. It will. We've got tons of resources to help you in your journey. And Patrick and I will be here all along to make sure that you're successful. We'll talk to you next time. Cheers.